Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. So after the last two videos that I did talking about walls and sheathing and my preferences on how to construct a wall, the comments got me thinking, maybe we're not all talking about the same functions of a wall. So today, we are going to talk about walls, what it isn't good for, absolutely something. Now, Veronica and I have a debate going, I say that the song is war, huh, what it isn't good for, absolutely nothing. She says it's war, huh. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Now, we looked up the lyrics, so don't go Googling it and say, Jordan, you're wrong, because I know that Google says, what is it good for? But when you listen to the song, they distinctly say, what it is it good for? So, vote below in the comments, Team Jordan, what it is it good for? Team Veronica, what is it good for? Um, Team Jordan's going to win, because it's pretty obvious. All right, so... First thing that a wall is supposed to do on your home is to keep up the roof, right? So it's a structural component and everybody says, well, that's obvious. We have a wall to keep up a roof to keep the rain off of our heads. That's true, but the loading mechanisms are a lot different than what most people assume. Not only is this wall in compression, as gravity is pushing down on our roof, the wall's pushing back up and it's in compression, we can also get tension we can also get the roof lifting off the wall and you say well how is that happening wind when wind blows up over that roof it acts like an airplane wing the wind moving over the top of the roof creates a low pressure there's a high pressure underneath and it'll lift the roof off don't believe me go look at any hurricane damage footage or tornado footage and you'll see complete trust roofs that have been pulled up off of the box and set over somewhere else now there's a great jlc article go look it up talking about a Habitat for Humanity community that was hit by a hurricane and because he had ties between the rafters and the foundation, tension ties pulling this whole thing down, the roof was not able to come off and it's amazing. The houses look perfect after a huge hurricane. So that is when they are in tension. Now they're also in torsion and this is where the sheathing comes in, right? If I have the same wind and it's pushing on the house, this wall is wanting to do this. I've got my floor here. This wall is wanting to go out like that. There's my moment. How do I take care of that? I put sheathing on this space here and that ties this corner to this corner and this corner to this corner so that as this wall is wanting to push, it puts this diagonal in tension, it puts this diagonal in compression, and we don't get that wall falling over. Now you'll hear it called shear strength because when I drive my nails through that, through that sheathing into my stud, and I drive another nail here, and it's trying to tilt the wall this way, and it's putting this in compression and this in tension, it's actually pulling this nail in shear. I've got this, this stud fixed, and I've got the sheathing wanting to pull just directly perpendicular to my nail, and that's putting that nail in shear. So that's why I sometimes call it shear strength. You'll also hear it called racking strength, as this house is being racked by the wind. But it is a torsion um, it's a torsion load that you're having with wind as well as anywhere that you have earthquakes. So if that earth moves over to one side, you've got inertia holding the top still relative to the earth and all of a sudden the earth moves and this isn't wanting to move with it. So it puts, again, it puts a, a uh, moment on our structure, a torsion on our structure and we need that rigidity from my preference is sheathing. You can also you do cross ties if you live in a high earthquake zone. Sometimes you do both. You do cross ties and sheathing. Not doing some sort of a rigid strong sheathing in my opinion is a bad idea. I don't like thermal ply. I definitely don't like just the cloth that you're putting on there. And if you're depending on your drywall on the inside to keep the, the structural rigidity, We've all seen what drywall does with humidity and moisture. It's just not a good, in my opinion, a good structural component. So I prefer sheathing on the outside. So that is the structural components of the wall. Pretty obvious, pretty straightforward. Where it gets a little bit more divisive, I guess, is on the control layer. So a wall should control water infiltration. It should control heat transfer. It should control air infiltration and it should also control vapor drive. Now, water, I've never had anybody argue with me on should a wall be water resistant. Um, have had people say strangely that it shouldn't be waterproof. Um, I want my walls to be water 
proof. I don't want water coming in to my wall, especially if I have a modern house and I don't have any overhangs. But even if I have overhangs, rain will drive sideways when it's pushed by wind and you'll get a pressure pushing the water in. So I want the water to stay outside of my wall assembly. Um, the number one cause for litigation in residential construction, by the way, is water infiltration. So make sure that we keep that out. The easiest way to do that is to take a pin on your house design and to trace around your water envelope, your water control layer, and you should be able to go around the whole house without ever taking the tip of your pin off of the structure. One of the places where it does get a little bit contentious is when we have the window here. You notice that I drew the line around the window like no water was ever going to get through this window assembly. In reality, especially with vinyl windows, but really all windows, I mean even a aluminum clad wood, these materials expand and contract and at the corners you can have them expand and contract and open up so that water that hits the pane of glass comes down and hits the top of your window sill and then runs to those corners and gets in behind your WRB. You've seen it if you've done any remodels. Most of the time when you pull out of windows, if there's going to be water damage, it's going to be at the two corners of the window. So I just assume that my windows will eventually leak. If they never leak, if they're a great window, and we use some really high quality windows, if it never leaks, great. We haven't done anything to hurt the assembly. If it does leak, we've just bought ourselves years of protection where we're not having to come in and pull out and do remediation on a water leak. So I assume that the window is going to leak. I put a pan underneath it. I tilt it at five degrees. I've drawn it much more than five degrees here. Five degrees isn't that much. It just gives gravity a little bit of help to pull the water out. I have it back dam so that water won't come back up the other way. And I make sure that I keep that bottom flange pushed out away from my sheathing WRB to allow the water to come over the top and down on the outside of my WRB layer. Um, I know what you're thinking now. Well, if you don't flash the bottom, if you flash the top and the two sides and you don't flash the bottom, that's just going to be a huge air leak to come back inside your house. Well, I'll talk about that here in a second when we talk about air. Let's talk about the second most important thing that a wall should do. It should keep heat inside your house. If you're heating, it should keep the heat outside your house if you're cooling. This becomes a more complicated issue than just putting insulation in the walls when you're worried about vapor. Because remember, we can have condensation happen inside our walls. If we have an insulated wall and it is cold and dry outside and it's warm and humid inside and that water vapor goes through the wall and hits the back side of a cladding inside our wall and it condenses, we are going to have water, liquid water, on the inside of our wall. Now we used to think that vapor drive was a big reason that we had water driving through our walls. Now we know that it's really air. If you have air coming through your wall, you're bringing in tons of water vapor in with it. You're not, if you have it airtight, your vapor open, vapor closed, isn't as important, but it is, it is somewhat important. So air, you do the same thing that you do with water. You take a pin and you go around your whole enclosure, making sure that your air envelope, you never have to lift off the pin. So in this case, I'm gonna say that I've got a piece of sheetrock up top doing my air ceiling on the top, and I've got caulk here, and I'm going to come down the inside on the inside of my window and around. This is where on the window, you go around the whole window. We prefer caulk and a backing rod, a foam backing rod, because it expands and contracts better. A lot of people do closed cell foam and that's fine, but we just feel that as you get that expansion and contraction, there's more of a risk of foam cracking at that interface than caulk. So a backing rod with caulk over it and we come on down. You can also do it on the outside with, say, a zip system with tape, great air sealing. Um, again, you drop back here, you hit that, you hit that caulk, comes back out, and you make it all the way around your house. So there's a couple of tricky things up here that you got to think about, and down here that you got to think about. We can get into all of that on future videos, but uh, air sealing is very important. Now, I hear people screaming at their computer right now, houses need to breathe! Houses don't need to breathe. People 
need to breathe. I am not suggesting that we make a completely airtight structure, plug up all the holes, close all the doors, and turn your family loose in there and have them all suffocate to death and it stinks and it's smelly and it's humid and it's gross. No, that's dumb. What I want to do is I want to put in a system to bring in fresh air from the outside and exhaust stale air from the inside, but I want to do it on my terms. I want to keep the heat inside my house and I want to keep the cold outside of my house. I want to have the fresh, uh, clean air from the outside in and I want the stale air out. I want to make the decisions on how to push it out and how to bring it in, when and how. I don't want it leaking in through every nook and cranny in my house because if I have a lot of air coming through and I have a cold condensating surface, I will get wa liquid water instead of water vapor and I'll have mold and all other kinds of things. Finally, vapor. So vapor drive, like I said, isn't nearly as big of a deal as air, but it is something to think about. You can get vapor in a humid exterior and a cold dry interior you can have vapor driving in and if you're not careful with how you do the insulation you can get condensation either on the inside surface here in the south it's cold and dry on the inside it's hot and humid on the outside you have vapor drive coming in it hits the back side of my sheetrock here and it turns back into liquid water and it eats the craft paper or mold grows and it eats the craft paper and it has moisture to keep growing and we have a mold problem opposite case would be in the cold northern climates vapor comes from inside goes and hits a cold exterior surface and you've got mold issues there as well so vapor open materials versus vapor closed there's a million ways of building this assembly in order to take care of that it mostly has to do with how you do your insulation and where your cold condensing surfaces are and making sure that you don't allow uh, high amounts of water vapor either through diffusion or through air to hit those cold condensing surfaces. I hope this helps. I know it's a lot. There's a lot more that we can go into. I didn't just make all of this stuff up. Um, Joe Stebrick has a great site called buildingsciencecorporation.com. He's got for free tons of articles. Go out there, educate yourself. He makes much better drawings. He makes a lot more sense. He's a fun guy to read, so I highly recommend going and checking him out. Subscribe below if we've earned it. Go follow us over at Instagram. Comment below again, war, huh, what it isn't good for. And we'll see you next time on Jordan Smith Builds.